Hey, Abundant Parents, it's Leah. In this video, we will be talking all about helping your children not only recognize what intuition is, but to listen for their own and uncover their truth, and in doing so, helping to guide them towards their life purpose. If you like my videos, please subscribe. I do post a video at least once a week, if not more. So in addition to hitting that little subscribe button, also please hit the bell. By hitting the bell, you will be notified when I post new videos. The law of attraction is science deeply rooted in quantum physics. It's this idea that there's energy at play everywhere in our universe. And that of course means that it's at play in our life and our feelings, our emotions as well. Since our emotions are based in energetic consciousness, this means that mastering our emotions, mastering our feelings is a really huge piece to teaching us not only about ourselves, but how to create what we want in our lives. By mastering our feelings, trusting our intuition, we learn how to recognize when we're having good vibrations or bad vibrations, good feelings or bad feelings, and then leaning into those feelings that feel good, or at the very least, leaning into those feelings that feel better. We can talk about teaching kids to listen to their intuition, but the first step is teaching your children to recognize their intuition, those, those small tickles, those little voices that give us guidance that, that over time we may learn to, to ignore or learn to push to the side. I don't think that there is a woman alive who at one point or another in her life didn't think my intu intuition, my intuition was totally telling me not to do that and I did it anyway and it totally backfired on me. So teaching your children from a really early age that, that those feelings, those intuitions are really valid and they can trust those. We are conditioned over time to rely on truths that are not our own instead of our own intuition. We learn to read books to get insight from other people. We learn to listen to teachers, to our employers. Our very first source of, of looking outside of ourselves for our truth is, is by the teaching of, of our parents. And so as parents, what we can do is from the very earliest time, teach our children to start to listen to those little messages, those, those little notes from our own intuition. And so when our children are ready to leave the comfort of our own guidance, they have a very strong structure of their own intuition, a very strong understanding of their own intuition, and they know what to look for, what to listen for when receiving messages from their own inner guidance. By teaching your children to become aware of their own intuition and to listen for their own inner truth, you're saving them from a future of leaving the safety of using you as the guide and you as their truth and then beginning to search for that truth in other people, in their peers, in their employers, sometimes at church. Ultimately, we end up doing probably the most common place to look for truth and that is in romantic partners. But by teaching your children a very strong moral foundation, what resonates for them is their, their truth, their morals, they will go out to this world and, and they will learn from a lot of other people, but they're always going to judge the messages that they get from the outside world based on what their own inner truth already is. A really fantastic way to teach your children to start to have a relationship with their intuition and to, to become aware of it and to listen for it is when they are out in the world experiencing things and communicating it to you, ask them, how does that feel? By asking them how they feel or how it feels, you're, you're encouraging them to pause a moment reflect internally about how that's feeling on the inside and think about how those outside influences were affecting their feelings on the inside. Very similarly, another really great question you can ask your kids is, what do you think? I always let my kids know that I am here to help them, that I will help them through their problems, but what is most important is what they think they should do and I will help them sort through that process. Another really great way to teach your children what their intuition is, what that feels like in the inside or on the inside, is to ask them when they are questioning things, make sure that you allow them that space to really take that psychological journey towards what truth is. That means they may be getting facts from a lot of different areas or they may be hearing different versions of a similar story and they may be trying to make sense of it. but 
their intuition is telling them that all these facts aren't lining up. So a really great way to help your children tune into their intuition is to, to help them look at the world around them and really look with clear, unjudging eyes of, of what is true and what isn't and how those, um, how those relate to one another and how those compare to one another and what kind of questions that those might arise in their children. A really great example I have of this is, and if you're listening with your little ones, I'm about to talk about Santa. I know it's like a big expose, so maybe pause the video or put on some headphones. All right, I've done my disclosure. So a really great example of this was my daughter two years ago was asking a lot of questions about the Easter Bunny, about Santa. She was recognizing that she was having this funny feeling about it that the information she was being given about the Easter Bunny and Santa just really wasn't adding up. And it got to the point where she was insistently asking me enough, just over and over and over again, that it got to the point that I was feeling less like this was a really fun childhood experience and more like I was lying to my child. It no longer resonated as fun and playful, but rather seemed like I was teaching her not to trust her intuition on this. Now you are all going to have to use your own intuition to decide when is the right time for you to have this conversation with your kids. For my daughter, she was seven, almost eight. Um, and just given her personal experiences, it really seemed like it was the right, the right time to share with her. She, she was being very, very, very insistent on, on the questioning to me. Ultimately, it allowed me to have this really amazing conversation with her about what she was feeling on the inside, that little tickle of her feeling like things weren't adding up, what she was being told just wasn't right. It was allowing her to really look at all of the facts that she was being presented and saying, wait a minute, this just doesn't seem right. I'm being told that I should believe it, but everything else that I'm both seeing as facts and that I'm feeling on the inside is telling me that this isn't right gave me the opportunity to say, that is your intuition. It is your intuition telling you, these things I'm hearing about Santa just aren't adding up. So I encouraged her to recognize that tickle, that feeling, that little bit of a sense that she had that things weren't, weren't vibrating about Santa. Ultimately, it's also provided me this really amazing opportunity that anytime she's having um, that intuition feeling, like she's getting those little nudges from her inner self, I ask her, does it feel like it was with Santa? Remember how you felt with Santa? That was your intuition. Is it a similar feeling? And we're able to rely on this example again and again and again as she as she grows into herself, as she explores different types of peer dynamics, as she begins to question the world around her, as she is exploring this more um, developed sense of herself. So it's a really great opportunity to as you're going through your, your daily life with your kids, find opportunities to allow them to, to lean into their intuition and begin to recognize it. My last tip today about helping your kids to listen for their intuition and to begin to have an awareness of their intuition is to encourage them to take a breath. That means when they are up against some decision-making, somebody has asked them a question that is a little bit more, uh, less about what kind of pizza do you want and more intrinsic value kind of questions, encouraging them to take a breath first before they answer questions. This simple, simple practice is going to guide them all throughout adulthood. I know that it's becoming more and more important for men as well as women, but I know as a woman, it's always been my inclination to always say yes when I'm asked to do things, to always be a helper, to always sacrifice myself to help others. Now listening to one's intuition and finding your purpose are very, very tight friends. Understanding your intuition, listening to those inner urges, nudgings, voices, is going to allow you to be more open to recognizing what your purpose may be. And the same is for kids. So by teaching them from a very, very early age to listen to their intuition, to tap into their inner truth, that is going to lead them to being more aware of what their purpose might be in this life. It is never too early to begin to talk to your children about what they might like to be in adulthood, what they feel their purpose might be. It's never too early to start this practice. 
a lot of us are probably already encouraging our children to try on as many hats as possible. If they want to be a fireman, maybe we take them to go meet the, the firefighters at the department or at a parade. If they are interested in cooking, maybe you enroll them in a cooking class. If they're interested in dance, you enroll them in dance classes. At the end of the day, you never know what might be that, that purpose for your child or how they might find their purpose through what they love to do. By kids exploring as many of the different things they might like to do now, they learn what they like and what they don't like. They learn to reach for their better feelings. And, and in doing that, they also end up understanding what are the things they might like to do better in adulthood. It's really important in this particular point that as parents, we keep our ego out of parenting. And we make sure that we are encouraging our children in what they might like to do and not in opportunities we feel we may have missed in our own childhood. It doesn't mean your children can't have the same interests as the opportunities you feel you missed, but make sure that you are not pushing your children down a path that is more about your ego, things that you may have wished you could have done in childhood, and making sure that it's really in tune for what they enjoy and what they like. By really letting them explore all of these different versions of themselves at the end of the day, it's going to eliminate as much of this when they are closer into adulthood. The less control we try to have over our children and them discovering who they are, because remember, they've all come to this world with their own ideas, their own purpose. So the, as much as we keep ourselves out of, out of what they might like to be, the more likely they are to go into adulthood with a very sure sense of what their purpose might be and the path that they want to take from here on out. Volunteering is an incredible opportunity for children to understand purpose, not just their own purpose, but the purpose of others. I can't emphasize enough the importance of volunteering in children's lives. Volunteering gives children a sense of other people's suffering and gives them a very altered perception for the life that they may be living in, in their own home, their own school. It is also this recognition of what other people are lacking and in ways that other people might be suffering that helps your children to be more grateful for what they already have. And, and being grateful for your current circumstance is a huge piece of the law of attraction. So by giving your the excuse me, by giving your child the perspective of the suffering of others, the lack of others, they can see how they can not only help those people, but how grateful they can be for everything that they already have in their life. One of the things I love most about introducing children to volunteering is it gives them the opportunity to see other people living their purpose. This idea that you can always look for the helpers, you can always see people that are doing good things in the world, but this gives your children a very tight-knit view of, of people that have found that inner guidance, they've, they've thought about what their purpose might be, and they're taking action to put that purpose to work out into the world. Recognizing the importance of suffering is really powerful in, in discovering your purpose. In the law of attraction, everything is good. Regardless of how we perceive it good or bad, the universe provides us everything to grow us and improve our existence. This means even the things that we think of as terrible or devastating or heartbreaking are in fact still good. Why are they good? Because they are growing us. They are providing us incredible perspective. And in retrospect, with the right mindset, we will find the gifts the suffering has provided us. We are conditioned from a very early age to believe that suffering is bad, and even more so that it should be avoided at all cost. But it is an opportunity to really have an amazing perspective. We know what it feels like to feel good. If we run away from suffering, we will never know what it feels like to truly feel bad. And it is in that contrast that we can really expand, that we can really align, and we can really become awake. In this perspective of having good times as well as bad times, it really allows us this opportunity, opportunity to be so much more grateful for all of the little things in our life that bring us joy on a daily basis. Suffering also provides us this really outstanding opportunity to manage our feelings in a really conscious way. 
with the law of attraction, we're always reaching for better feeling thoughts, but you have to first recognize the bad feeling thoughts. So through suffering, not only do we recognize that we know what feeling good feels like, that we now know what feeling bad feels like, but how to make those conscious efforts to, to shift from feeling, feeling bad back into those better feeling thoughts. If the suffering is, is truly intense, then it teaches us that we need to seek tools to reach further into our own capacity to get through all of our worst days. At the end of the day, it is the suffering that gives us perspective and lessons. And it's these lessons that really expand us and grow us and, and really help us understand what is our heart song? What, what is that purpose within us that is going to drive us to put good out into the world? You'll find examples of people using their suffering to find their purpose all around you. I um, know one family whose daughter was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and they have created an entire nonprofit where they make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to fundraise for type 2 diabetes. And this, what started as a little, very similar to a lemonade stand, has now grown into a, a pretty large event a couple times a year where they are raising money for type 2 diabetes. They have used the suffering of, of their family, this completely life-altering condition of type 2 diabetes, to not, to not only create awareness, but to also raise money to help fund research. I also know another mom who lost her son last spring to a very rare uh, brain tumor. And this is a loss, as a mom myself, I, I cannot even fathom. I, I try to even just chip away at the tip of the iceberg of, of what her grief and suffering may be. And I just, I know that what I can try to empathetically feel doesn't even become close to, to what she's actually going through. And yet, through this devastating experience, she has created an entire um, nonprofit designated to raising money to, to bring awareness to this disease and find cures for it. And she has raised $120,000 since last spring by herself raising awareness for this, this terrible suffering that she had in her life in which she lost her son. And then you have people like myself where I've had pockets of suffering on and off throughout my life. I experienced a parent who was sick for most of my childhood, and then I lost that parent at a very young age. I experienced infertility. I was diagnosed with um, an autoimmune condition, and, and so I experienced not being able to become pregnant. And then I experienced many, many miscarriages, and so I had a lot of suffering. And then I went through a very devastating divorce where I felt like I lost my power in so many regards, but I also lost my power that I thought I had over my children to raise them in a very specific way. It was through that suffering that made me realize I couldn't control the experiences of my children that made me realize how misguided I was in thinking I could protect them from everything. And it led me down this path of exploring the law of attraction and realizing that the most powerful thing I could do for my children was to teach them their own power, to create their life, to tap into their intuition and purpose, and to always know their truth. So remember, when teaching your children to use the law of attraction to create an amazing life filled with truth and purpose, you must first teach them to know what their intuition is, to help them listen for their intuition, and then to trust that intuition. And then using all of those inner truths that they receive from themselves to help them explore the world around them to, to uncover what their purpose might be and then to lean into that and be confident in that. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to hear more from me, I do have lots of extra videos here on YouTube. I do post a new video every single week, sometimes more. I also host the Abundant Parent Community Workshops. You can catch them on theabundantparent.com. There is a new workshop each month. It is a membership, and I bring in experts in their field to talk about conscious parenting, about healthy eating, about acupuncture, energy work. The sky is the limit. If it's going to support you and your family and creating really aware, conscious children, then those are the tools that I am providing to you on a monthly basis. You can catch the workshops on theabundantparent.com. I will post the link below. You can also find me on Facebook. Join the group. There you will hear a lot more about the workshops, the Abundant Parent Community on Facebook. Thank you so much for spending your limited parenting time with me. I wish you a day full of light, love, and abundance.